Welcome to learning to engineer. How to shift a branch point before or after a summing point. We are going to look at that in this video. We are going to try to solve this by block diagram disintegration technique. Usually when you face this problem, the best and the easiest method is to convert that into signal flow graph and count the number of loops and try to find out how many loops interfere with the forward transfer function and quickly find out the transfer function of the system. But in uh, exams, when you are supposed to use only block diagram reduction techniques or maybe due to some other reasons you have to use only block diagram reduction, you can use this critical rule and this critical rule tells how to shift the branch point before or after a summing point. Let's get started. Consider this exam. You have three summing points here and then you have three branch points over here and it is arranged in such a way that there is one branch point after every summing point. So no other way, however you shift one branch point before or after a block, you will have to move this uh, branch point before a summing point or after a summing point at some point in time. Let's say for example, you take this branch point, okay, the one that is after G2. You can either right away convert this here and try to solve this equation that is one approach or you can put shift this before g2 and then take another shift here to try to solve this problem but either way however you move this point there will be one point there will be one situation where you have to apply this critical rule this is called as a critical rule because it is used only in case of emergencies i mean when you only when you don't have any other way to solve this problem. To push a branch point before a block, we need to ensure that the equation at the point doesn't change. I'll explain this. Let's say for example, the value of signal at this point is A and A is considered here, it is multiplied with H1 and then feedback into this area. Okay, so when you are shifting this branch point over here, the A will not be same as such. You need to ensure that this A is same here also. How will you do that? Let's take a step before this signal. Okay. So what is A basically? It is multiplication of this signal, let us say B. This signal into G2 is A. B, B into G2 is equal to A. Okay, if I am pushing this branch point before G2, we will not be able to multiply G2 as such. So what should we do? You should deliberately add the block over here also so that B into G2 will be A again. A is equal to B into G2. That is why we multiply the transfer function of the block in the branch point when we are shifting it before the block. Okay, in case you are shifting a branch point after a block, you will divide the branch point by that transfer function G2. It's going to be divided by G2 in case you are shifting it other way around. Okay. So now we have shifted this branch point to this area. Okay. So this line carries the value of G2 multiplied by H1. Okay. Let's redraw this circuit. This particular area is common to the left side loop as well as the right side loop and they are interlocked like this. We need to separate them into pieces like this. How do we do that? We can convert this branch point before the summing point. So as a result, you will be able to create a loop on the left and a loop on the right. Okay. So how do we do that without changing the equation? Let's pay close attention to the signal at this point. This is A, let's say, and this is B. So what's the signal at this area? It is A minus B. We are going to add another summing point to subtract this H2. Okay, it's just the same. Okay, we are considering this signal, which is same as this, and subtracting it with the signal along this path okay so we are considering the same 
and inputting this into G2H1 block and it's fed back in this way. So when we are trying to add a summing point, we ensure that the signal before and after the conversion remains the same. Okay. This might be a tricky to a little tricky to understand. So I want to repeat this point one more time. Okay. Before the shift, this is the area where the shift is going to happen. This signal is A, let's say, and this signal is B. A minus B was the signal at this point. And this A minus B is being multiplied by the system transfer function G2 into H1. So when we have a G2 into H1 over here, the very same signal is needed. Because we shifted this uh, branch point before the summing point, the actual signal value is just A and not A minus B. So what we are trying to do? We are just trying to put a summing point and just enter the value of minus B at this area. Okay. So this signal is subtracted one more time. So this signal B is taken here. A is taken from here. So A minus B is subtracted and sent as an input into the retransfer function G2 into H1. So here as well as here there is no signal change because of the shift. Okay. So let's break this down to be able to solve the equation of transfer function. So now if we observe there are two paths. This is the first path. The signal originating from C of S to H2 to this. This is the first path. Path number one. Okay. There is another feedback path. Through H2 it is going into G to H1 and then reaching here. This is the second part. Since both of them are blended into the same line, we will not be able to solve the equation easily. So let's separate both of them. Okay. Path 1 will be separate, path 2 will be separate. Okay. This is the path number 1. The path number 2, we will put another H2 line. Okay. This is the value of the signal at this end is let us say 1 and it is minus H2. Okay. So it is 1 minus H2 into G2 H1. So here again, the value of the signal will be G2 H21 multiplied by 1 and it will be G2 H1 into H2 multiplied by a minus H2. So this will be minus G2 H1 H2 and this signal will be fed back here. So let's have this signal line separately and this signal line separately. Okay. This is the first line G2 H1 and here you have minus G2 H1 into H2. Here it's a um, negative feedback. I have separated the negative term into two. One with a G2 H1 and one with a G2 H1 multiplied by the H2 loop from the right. Okay. Now we need to apply some uh, technique to solve this area. Okay, this looks a little bit uncomfortable to apply the rules. So what we will do, we will shift this summing point before G2. Okay, and then we will have two summing points together. By associative law, we can swap them. A plus B plus C plus D is same as C plus D plus A plus B. Right, by associative law. So to switch a summing point before a block, we need to multiply the transfer function of the block to the branched loop also. So here we have two negative feedback loops, one inside the other. This is the first loop and here we have a addition point. Then we have another negative feedback loop and all summed up will be fed back along with this term. Okay. So this is how we have broken down a complex equation into two or three different stages. Okay. Let's call the open loop function as g dash of s. g dash of s will be g1 divided by 1 plus g2 h1 into g1 
the, the first term okay the second term will be 1 plus g3 by g2 and what's the third term third term is g2 divided by 1 plus g2 h2 okay we can simplify this a little bit we can simply call this as g2 plus g3 divided by g2 and so here what will happen this g2 can get cancelled with this okay so forward path transfer function is g1 into g2 plus g3 divided by 1 plus g1 g2 h1 multiplied by 1 plus g2 into h2 this is the forward path transfer function and what is the reverse path transfer function h dash of s is equal to minus g2 h1 into h2 so what is the overall transfer function c of f s by r of s which is the overall transfer function will be g dash of s divided by 1 plus g dash of s into h dash of s g1 into g2 plus g3 divided by 1 plus g1 g2 h1 into 1 plus g2 into h2 divided by 1 plus g1 into g2 plus g3 divided by 1 plus g1 g2 h1 into 1 plus g2 into h2 this is the g dash of s this has to be multiplied with h dash of s minus g2 h1 h2 so the denominator term will anyways get cancelled here so this is g1 into g2 plus g3 divided by 1 plus g1 g2 h1 into 1 plus g2 h2 plus g1 into g2 plus g3 multiplied by minus g2 h1 h2 so we can easily put this plus and minus here g2 h1 into h2 times g2 plus g3 okay so we can uh, multiply the terms inside and cancel off to get this answer so this both terms will get cancelled and as a result you will get g1 into g2 plus g3 whole divided by 1 plus g2 into h2 plus g1 g2 h1 minus g1 g2 g3 h1 into h2 okay so this is the overall transfer function of the system you can try this by signal flow graph and verify the answer okay thanks for watching we will talk a little bit little more detail about signal flow graph in my next video and also solve the same problem using that method Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section and do give a thumbs up if you like this video. Thank you.